Um, good afternoon, everybody who's here with us today. Um, we're so excited. This is a very special kind of webinar that we are doing here at Creative Zone, and that is in partnership with our friends at Creative 971. Um, so this is the first of our uh, e-commerce and dropshipping masterclass series. My name is Zishan Ashraf. I work with Creative Zone, and uh, here we have with us Zachary Hines, our business setup manager at uh, Creative Zone, along with uh, Nico and Julia, the founders of uh, Creative 971. So Creative 971 is a boutique digital agency, and they are the number one rated Shopify experts here in uh, Dubai, in the UAE. Um, and so Creative 971 specialized in ensuring high quality digital presence uh, to make brands and businesses stand out from the crowd. They have assisted all types of businesses, startups and SMEs uh, to get their e-commerce business online and running in the Middle East. Uh, so this is, will be the first of um, a, um, a weekly series this month. Uh, we will have a few more modules coming on. This particular module will be about how to get your e-commerce and dropshipping license and how to set up the business in the UAE. The next few sessions will be about uh, logistical um, support, uh, how to get your payment gateway set up, how to market your e-commerce business, um, and how to even build your e-commerce uh, web uh, website. Uh, you can feel free to use the chat and the question A box to ask any of your questions. Nico, Julia, and Zach are here to answer your questions. At the end of this program, on the 25th of November, we will have a physical meet and greet at the Creative Zone Business Hub office. Um, so th those uh, details will be emailed to you and we would love to have you here. Um, and yeah, without further ado, uh, Nico and Julia, Zach, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Zishan. So first of all, Thank you guys for joining in um, and for being part of the series. We would love, of course, to see you over the next uh, couple of weeks with us. And then I think, as Zishan said, the perfect opportunity would be meeting us all in person, not only to interact, you know, after such a long time with COVID, um, of course, we'll be respecting measures, but it would be nice to see you, you know, to, to talk to you, to you know, feel uh, the emotions, fear, you know, whatever there is when, when it comes to building a business, there is a lot of, um, you know, tension or energy in the room. So we just want to make sure we support you best. And that's why, for example, as well, we've partnered up with Creative Zone to make that happen. So not only is our name similar, I think I've, I've told it a couple of times that um, our journey in 2016, very early on, we were initially a client of Creative Zone, so it's funny how the stories come together again, and that's why you know we want to encourage you. We want to tell you that you know it's not just built on sand. We're, we're living in a country that you know is unstable and can sometimes give you the idea that things are you know not possible or it's difficult. But you know that's why you have experts that you can rely on in the niche to make that possible. And I think with the dropshipping, we've seen a lot of interest, like, I mean, all over as being in e-commerce and working with Shopify, of course. And um, I believe the same happened to Creative Zone. So we said, you know, instead of just waiting on, uh, we will uncover the truth, the myth, you know, the, the mysterium around that dropshipping model of e-commerce. And we've taken, um, of course, or we've been granted to working with Zach on this in terms of specifically answering your questions for the licensing purposes. So we'll take it forward. We'll take it through um, as we are taking through our online masterclass as well. It is e-commerce dropship focused. So the topics as we go through during this month will actually touch base on all the topics that we're doing in the online training as well. Nico is here, as you can see, because he's head spearing the whole e-commerce uh, dropshipping part from our side, from the Creative 971 team. Yeah, and without further talking towards the topics, I would just dive into uh, module one which we will approach a bit more like individual. We have a couple of questions that by nature that we have gathered and uh, Zach has been al already been, you know, asked quite a lot of times, which are the frequently asked questions. So once we run through these from a program, we think another, let's say half an hour, 40 minutes, and then we would like to give you time and room to ask your questions as well. I think there is a chat function. Um, I'm not sure, um, Zishan, with the raising hands, or is there any ways um, the audience can ask in any questions anytime. 
Yes, uh, the audience, please know that you can use the chat box to, um, to ask your questions. Uh, there's also a Q&A box if you want to ask questions. Um, I will be going through these uh, chats and, and question boxes to see if anyone's questions were not answered. Sure. I think then uh, we can start. I mean, the first module is definitely dropship license, uh, e-commerce, and then as well um, in terms of the um, business setting up process. So I think without further keeping you posted or keeping you weighted. Um, so the first and foremost question is, do I need a license to start dropshipping? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Again, thanks for, for the introduction. Um, yeah, so just a bit about me, just briefly. I'm a business setup manager here at, at Creative Zone. I'm obviously working quite closely with uh, with Creative 971, obviously Zichan, one of my colleagues. Um, again, just to, to, to clarify the, the, the 25th, great to be great to, to meet up with everyone, just to put a, a face to a name. Um, but yeah, without further ado, so these are the, the basically the, the most commonly asked questions around this sphere. So around the, the licensing sphere and the company setup, because it can get a bit convoluted, particularly when you're trying to, to research it yourself. So again, the purpose of this is for, for me to try and make it as, uh, as easy as possible. If you have any questions, you want me to clarify anything, uh, please do just drop a, a chat or a, a Q and A or anything like that. But yeah, without further ado, so do I need a license to start drop shipping? Now for any sort of trading, which includes e-commerce and drop shipping, anything that you're importing or trading here locally, it does require a trade license. So be that a free zone license or a mainland trade license, which are the two jurisdictions here, um, it does require you to have some form of trade license in order to, to do that. Now, it does benefit you to have a trade license first off because you can get an import code, which means that if you do want to go from drop shipping to holding inventory, for example, um, then, then you have that availability. Again, there's, there's various uh, uh, advantages that, that we'll go into upon sort of the, the other frequently asked questions. But yeah, to, to, to start off on the, on the right tone, you, you do need, if you're wanting to trade in the UAE, uh, a trade license. Mm, so from, from our side, these are most of the yeah, questions we get asked, right? How is it possible? But we'll come to all of the questions. So what I would do, I would recommend that we go through most of the question what we have like basically prepared and then we are we can do that a bit more interactive yeah perfect um, so next question um what is the difference between e-commerce and a drop shipping drop, drop shipping business um so i'll, I'll let the creative nights have one uh, touch on what drop shipping is um but the difference is essentially just as a precursor E-commerce is mainly where you're facilitating the importing and you're maybe holding goods or you're trading it yourself. Whereas drop, drop shipping is, is usually where you're not facilitating any of the, the product. You're not touching any of it really. It goes from manufacturer straight to, to clients. But yeah, if you guys want to touch on that a bit more, feel free. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you for highlighting that already. So the main difference is the business operations, right? Because we get asked uh, many times, yeah, but it's only a drop ship store. So first of all, any kind of shopper, us, whoever comes to any e-commerce website, we should not know or we know or we should not see, right? Kind of, is it a dropship business or not? Because you as a, as a customer who is willing to spend money on a website, you want to have the best um, appearance, right? So it should not be anything for a, a different for a shopper if he sees, let's say, a normal kind of retail store who has an e-commerce website, or if you're running any kind of concept for a drop shipping. So the main difference between that, as said, if you are starting your dropship business, you have way much more flexibility on growing and testing the market because you don't need to invest in the inventory as said, as well as you can reach out to different markets and yeah, regions very fast because you don't need to think about the infrastructure itself. Um, if it's on a normal e-commerce business, we have more hurdles to overcome, um, which would be then more the fulfillment, the cash and delivery. Cash and delivery is one big thing on drop shipping as well, um, which is so far not working out uh, in the way how maybe you would like to imagine that there are some ways how to do that, but then it would be if you have more sales and you um, work with one of these suppliers and these suppliers take more orders from you because you're already in the business selling a lot then it would be coming to 
kind of um, agreements between the manufacturer if he's able to select uh, yeah, a shipping courier who's basically providing that to you. It would be possible. However, this depends on the, yeah, on the manufacturer itself. Mm, yeah, agreed on that. So um, again, just to touch on, on the, the differences in terms of licensing. So at the core, sort of when you're looking to say start up a business, the difference to touch on that between e-commerce and drop shipping, it's the same business activity um, as, as a business activity connected to a license. But again, the actual procedure of doing it, i.e. e-commerce is where you handle the goods yourself, you handle inventory, you potentially look to get any warehousing space, for example, whereas drop shipping, on the other hand, is where you're just sort of quite hands off. Let's say, as, as, um, as these guys said rightly, testing the market, particularly if you're new to the UAE, you don't really want to have all of that liability where you're holding any stock or getting any warehousing space. Um, but yeah, so I think drop shipping is, is a little bit different in that way. I will drop a website for you guys here because this is the same website that we use um, for the uh, um, for the dropshipping oh, online masterclass. Course, yeah. yeah, so you can just have a look um, over at this yeah. smartpad.ae. So if you go to the website, for example, you wouldn't necessarily know that this is a dropshipping website, right? For you, it would probably seem like it's an e-commerce website that someone is selling their products. But yes, this store has been built on the dropship model. And this is what has been highlighted, how you can create the same store. I mean, we have another session later on this month focusing on how you can create a professional e-commerce store on Shopify. But yet you can have a look at smartpet.de, familiarize yourself a bit about it and see what actually can be possible. You know, it doesn't have to be always that awkward uh, backstore in the back of our minds that everyone thinks are you know like that get rich quick theme or get rich in an easy way please try to avoid this type of um you know thought process because in the end you're in for the long game building a business definitely takes a lot of effort and time on your branding and your strategies with who you you know build your alliances on etc so um yeah, so Sarah, I was just sharing it, but thank you, Zach was just sharing the side as well here. Um, other than that, um, I would say we would come definitely to the next question as this will probably highlight a bit more and then, you know, leaving enough questions for you at the end of this talk. So a lot of times what we get asked is what kind of license do I need to start my dropshipping business? So I think Zach was already highlighting it's the same activity, but Zach, maybe you can let us know what kind of license do people tend to go for when a drop shipping model is the um, requirement for a customer yeah certainly so i mean most if not all cases about 99 percent go towards a free zone um so free zone it just provides a bit more flexibility first off there's no local involvement second off most if not all of them particularly the the generic ones like the northern emirates free zones don't require office space it can set up in about four to five working days it's it's just a bit more free to, to do so bit more flexible so most of them go for a free zone license be that in a northern emirates which is a bit cheaper let's say charger and fajera for example or if they want a dubai presence with providing dubai visas things like that then we can provide it in a, in a dubai based free zone but 99 percent go with the free zone jurisdiction and the activity is is e-commerce again for, for both drop shipping and and e-commerce itself mm. great so next one would be how much will it cost me to start my e-commerce business? So I think that question is more dedicated now to the actual dropship activity. Um, so approximately or roughly, how much would it cost me? I think the same question by Esan at the same moment, mm. amazing. So how, mm. what would be the cheapest license plan for an e-commerce business on the mainland for non-dropshipping? I think maybe since we have the time, Zach, maybe you can outline for dropship and for non-dropship and then as well the difference quickly between mainland and free zone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, happy to go through that. So um, in terms of cost, it, it sort of is dictated by two factors, first of which if there's any visas required under the license and second of which obviously jurisdiction. So we'll go with free zone. I think it's easier for, for comparison's sake if we don't have any visas that are attached to the license just for consistency and go with purely just if you need the, the license itself. So in a free zone, particularly Northern Emirates free zones, they do promotions quite frequently. Um, for example, Sharjah Media City, they did a 5,750 dirham package. Um, 
which is fantastic to only have your overheads for an entire company formation at 5,750 dirhams. Um, I think more towards, let's say, if you wanted that to buy presence, it would be around about that 12 to 13 mark. So it is a bit more expensive, but it depends on the preference between uh, Dubai address or Northern Emirates um, uh, address and, and hence visas. So touching on the difference between the mainland. Now, the mainland is, is more for, uh, not, not niche, but specific business activities. Let's say if you need a an external approval, for example, or if you're wanting an office space in Dubai, or you're doing something where you're transacting or let's say building or opening a shop, for example, something where you're central in Dubai. Um, so the, the main difference first off with the mainland is it's a mainland is more expensive. Second of which um, it doesn't actually have an e-commerce activity. The closest to the e-commerce activity in the mainland is what's called either portal or commercial brokers which is essentially where you're linking a buyer and a seller, but you're not allowed to import, you're not allowed to sell yourself. So really for, for e-commerce and dropshipping, the, the DED hasn't quite caught up yet. DED is the mainland, by the way. Department of Economic Development is, is the municipality that deals with it. Um, but so when I say that, I mean mainland, but um, they haven't quite caught up with the, this whole e-commerce dropshipping, particularly cryptocurrency as well, but obviously we'll, we'll touch on that. Um, the, the free zone, as I said at the beginning, is, is the go-to for it, where it's much more flexible. Set, you can set up the company in four to five working days. You don't need an office space. There's no annual auditing. So you don't need to have an accountant. The only time you would need to, to account for anything would be VAT, for example, which is only calculated after $100,000 in turnover. Um, and also you don't have any paid up share capital, nothing like that. So those are the, the core differences, particularly in the e-commerce scene of between, uh, between uh, mainland and free zones. Yeah, I think another question as well by David, what's the license requirement for dropshipping or a normal trade license? I think you've just summed it up. Um, for mm -hmm. non-dropship business, I see there's a lot of questions. The free zone will not allow delivery of goods outside the zone. So without an external agent, uh, what, what would be happening or what who could act as that external agent? Maybe let's wrap up that question as well. Yeah, definitely. That, that's spot on. That's exactly how you would have to do it. So under company's law, um, here in the UAE, free zone companies are not allowed to transact in the mainland. Now, what they mean by transact, what they're targeting is if you're looking to set up, let's say, uh, a shop and you're looking to sell physical goods or sell physical goods in the Dubai mainland. So the way you get around this or not, not the way you get around it, but the, the, the way to, to deal with that is you have to use uh, an agent like a delivery company, Aramex take, for example, um, to deliver the goods either from your warehouse or from the port to your client. And that's the way you, you would operate under a free zone license. Yeah, I think, I mean, in general, maybe the difference here as well, or a sign for to, to let you know, like anything that you do under a dropship umbrella, since you are not physically the one, you know, importing that goods, it will be imported by the actual manufacturer, then sent to the actual client that purchased on your website you literally function as a third party enabler, but you're not the uh, you know, manufacturer or taking the reliability or responsibility of the source set product. You're not the manufacturer, right? So I think that would be different in, I mean, Zach knows that, you know, that would be maybe more specific on foods, but let's say if you're selling um, protein bars or anything of, you know, like food related items, then you already have a different setup or different involvement of the food licensing departments, laboratories, you know, health and sa food safety as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly correct. Yeah. Anything food related is, uh, can't be done under a generic freeze zone activity. It'd have to have, it would have to have something specific. Mm. I think there is also a relevant question of uh, Vasilis just coming in that he's a resident in Dubai, having established company in Germany through the web store. He's conducting drop shipping activities to consumers in the UAE only. Would he need to establish a company in the UAE? So technically, I mean, the, the recommendation, if you're looking to expand your business to a portion where you have full access to to the UAE, it, it is recommended to form a company here. The only way to, to transact here without forming a company is through a distributor. Um, I mean, drop shipping is ideal in that case because your only function is working through a distributor. Um, but there are more benefits than, than just, sort of just having access to the market. Obviously, uh, particularly on the banking sector, particularly taking advantage of, let's say, the taxation uh, policies here, things like that, where it's, it's a big benefit to, to have a company here. But inherently, with the drop shipping structure, you don't need to have a company here because you're functioning purely through distributors. 
Yeah. I think let's move on to our yeah, but next this one. Yeah, this one was a good question because we get that asked many times. Yeah, I think there will be a recording anyways mm. of the session. So anyone who wants to join in for the later sessions and didn't watch the first one, I think we'll make that available and irreversible for anyone um, joining in as well. Now, with the recent loss of the local sponsor being dropped for the uh, onshore companies, maybe Zach, you can shed some light on you know, what, what does the local sponsor needs to be? Like, is there activities, certain activities other than let's say e-commerce that are able without a local sponsor to be, you know, set up or, or how does that process work at the moment now? Yes, yeah, certainly. So this change came in um, as of June the 1st this year, where they mandated that 1,052 activities in the Department of Economic Development mainland um, don't no longer require a 51% shareholder. Now, nowadays, it's for most, if not all, trading companies, which are considered under the act under the activity of commercial activities, um, no longer need that 51% shareholder. So for, uh, as I say, for professional activities like consultancy, for example, I'll touch on that briefly, they never did, they just need a local service agent. But for, we'll keep it on topic of trading, uh, you no longer need a sponsor, regardless of if you set it up in a free zone, you never did. Now mainland, if you're doing any sort of trading, you no longer need, need a, uh, a local sponsor. Great. I think there was no other question from the audience, so we'll move to the next one. Now, the next question is a bit of more, um, I think, related to us. So I'm going to uh, ask the question and then I'm sure Nico will jump in. So basically, what are the benefits of going to an agency to enable the e-commerce business? Um, um, or um, is there something I can do on my own or freelancer? You know, what are the benefits or, you know, should I hire someone internally? So these questions is, of course, what we get asked in reverse a lot. And uh, I think Nico has a great answer on segmenting, you know, when it makes sense to work with an external agency and when probably it makes sense to work with a freelancer or internal staff. Yeah. So, I mean, I would just, yeah, I would say there is one part which is uh, drop shipping business and then another part which would be any kind of retail e-commerce business which you want to bring online. Um, the understanding is when you could or should do something by your own and when not, the question depends on your kind of knowledge or awareness about marketing, sales and all of that, right? So this is, it is usually something what you, you would say, okay, if you're quite um, aware and you understand the e-commerce industry and you know already all of these know-hows, what you just get to know if you would talk to successful e-commerce owners or to agencies like ours, because we just have the insights and we're working daily with um, a lot of big brands on that to, to get just more knowledge and be up to date. Um, I would say this is um, one big part because you buy in an agency from a kind of understanding experience and quality. Um, however, on the other side, if you do that, you only can reach to the limit of your own knowledge, if that makes sense, um, where you might not be aware about a few things which could be crucial. So I would say if you, if you would know what to do and how to do that from a quality um, and for a dropship business, um, yeah, a freelancer would be enough, to be honest. I mean, even though I would talk against our agency right now, but I mean, what most of the people are doing, right? If you start your own e-commerce business on a dropship base, you want to be as lean as possible, as cheap as possible, right? You don't want to maybe or need to look on so much on a different quality, right? Because you want to be fast and you need to test things. So usually what we see or hear or even recommend, this would rather, um, yeah, influence or the influencer like a kind of freelancer let's say it like that um would make sense but let's say if you're going to an agency you can yeah, expect different kind of quality so depending on what you will do based on your findings out with e-commerce for example if you would find okay you have a product niche which is actually hot it's working right you see a potential there then you could say okay you know what let's invest and really revamp that go through the e-commerce site to even build a more appealing one if you need um, to do so but as we have even that in our um, e-commerce training where we have all of that like 21 hours um, to be honest recorded and you will get that knowledge now over the next four weeks from us so 
it is it is basically that um, you could do that yourself if you know a few um, things for example a logo if you create a logo most of the people they're saying okay let's just take whatever we think of so what we would tell you is um, depending on your audience which you want to focus on right let's say if you want to sell on an audience for mothers right you would go for the industry you are going for, plus on the kind of approach of colors which give trust and uh, comfort, as well as like having that philosophy behind the colors, what is their kind of reputation, if you maybe have heard it before. Let's say blue or light blue comes like more as a trust, trust point of view, right? So you see this, um, yeah, many times even men wearing light blue shirts in business, right? There is a lot of stuff behind, and this is how you would define um yeah, a logo color or even approach or a color for your e-commerce business not only on what you like but rather what your audience might like and what you want to bring over to to them because end of the day yeah, yeah. the sales right so you you should convince and sell i think what you can do as well um if you have a look at smartpatch.ae again coming back to the reference site this is a site that we teach in the uh, online training in the online course to set it up from scratch so you can expect that quality if you do need more advice and it's like anything that you do, working with an expert saves you time, headache and money. I think this comes down, you know, you could learn and read and explore as much as you want, but you would never know as much as Zach knows in his industry, you would never be experienced as he is and he, you know, because he's working daily with a multiple of factors and it's the same with an e-commerce agency. So it's always good, you know, to, to bridge the gap, see where you are and then take it there uh, forward step by step. Yeah. Zach, do you have any comment to that or shall I jump to the next one? Or is there any I do question? indeed, yeah. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that just, just as a background information of the, mainly the differences between a freelancer permit and actually mm -hmm. a formation of a company, just the main differences. So first off, a freelancer permit is essentially, it was created um, as part of sort of, I, I suppose, a stepping stone between um, individuals that have just come to Dubai and want to see what the Dubai uh, climate, the business climate is like without actually forming a company, dedicating the, the, uh, the renewals, et cetera. So it's mostly on an independent basis, on an individual basis rather. So there's the, the main drawback. So you don't, you, you can't do it or you can't draw up contracts mainly because you require a business for that. You can't get an LLC structure as you would in a business, in a business license, meaning that essentially you would have to do this first off on your own personal bank account. Second off, if you if you the business was unsuccessful, which if you uh, if you go with Creative Nine Seven One, most likely it will not be. But um, if it is, then your personal assets are at risk. Things like that, where it's 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 quite temporary, and it was aimed at being temporary. In succession to having a business where you get an LLC structure, you can open a corporate account, which means it's completely separated from your personal finances. Second, uh, third of which you can draw up contracts, you can work with other companies, you can get office space, et cetera. The list goes on. But there are main differences. Again, we can see, particularly with free zones, they are coming down in price where it's becoming more and more and more competitive, particularly with freelance permits to, to the fact where there's only about a one to 2,000 dirham difference now. And obviously the, the benefits far outweigh that 2,000 cost. But yeah, the, the limitations are certainly there. And I suppose that, that leads us quite nicely onto a couple of questions that, that are in the chats. First of which is that I asked, um, does the license at 5,000 that I mentioned in charge of free zone permit me to import products from outside the UAE? Now it does indeed, yes. So you can apply for what's, what's called an import code under the, the trade license. And that allows you to take goods from the port, whichever port it might be, most likely Jebel Ali, uh, Jebel Ali port. Um, and that import code allow, allows you to, to, to um, bring goods from the port into the mainland again through a logistics company so not not limited on there no i think there is one more question of christelle afterwards maybe if you want to answer those questions too we have a free zone e-commerce license i believe we do not have the right to sell as mainland companies in stores online only is that correct and then if yes can we still make an agreement with another mainland company to sell in stores yeah, that's exactly correct, Christelle. That's that's um, spot on. So free zone companies, they can't set up things like pop ups, they can't set up physical stores because of that legislation in in companies law here where free zone companies can't transact in the mainland. But 
again, the, the second point that you made is drawing up things like a logistics agreement or um, a distributor agreement or something with an existing mainland company is a, is a great way to get around that if you're not if you don't have the capital to set up your own mainland license that's the perfect way to get around it that's that's yeah spot on great and then the uh, Ernest had sent a question does setting up an e-commerce dropshipping business grant you with a three-year visa um maybe you can touch on that visa respectiveness because not necessarily that you if you get a license that it automatically allows you to draw a visa from it Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So visas can be put under uh, business licenses. So they'd be called, if you're part of the shareholder structure, it would be an investor visa. There's two categories, investor and employee. Um, so businesses can sponsor these visas, yes, but it would be a bit more expensive because visas for a three-year term in the free zone, let's go with our, is stand, as a standard three years. It, it's around about six to 7,000 dirhams, for example, for the visa alone. So it would high, not high up, but it would increase the price of the, the license. But yes, you can indeed get a, a residency visa or an investor visa in this case um, to stay for three years, as long as you maintain the business renewals. Great. Um, so yeah, I think next one then, um, what are the things I should prepare, should be prepared with if I want to start my e-commerce or my dropship business? Now that question comes in from different angles, I think maybe from a e-commerce perspective or from where we can give you some lights other than the licensing, I think you should definitely be prepared of um, having a couple of savings or slash investment budget because it's not only the website that you be, will be needing, you will be needing um, definitely the um, details of licensing. I mean, you know, as Zach said, there is renewals, there is fees of visas that you have to respect. There are as well, you know, like once you touch on uh, the VET requirements where you have to be doing VET returns, you have to pay an accountant, you have to, you know, like certain requirements, even on the cost to bring in products and then to turn them over, ship them to your customer. What happens with a return? Who pays for that? So there are probably a couple of points that you need to or should be respecting as well. And then of course your marketing costs. Don't forget that like, you know, in, in let's say compared in Dubai mall or, or in other, you know, retail locations, you just have the footfall and you will pay that in the rent covered. So obviously since you're online, it doesn't automatically mean everyone can see you, right? So you still have to make sure that you get enough traffic that is relevant to then, you know, convert your items. And I think there are other factors in terms of the e-commerce, maybe more license related. Zach, if you have anything there to highlight, then that would be great as well. Yeah, I think I think you covered most of them. Um, so things that, that to take into account are quite similar, things like VAT registration. I mean, pretty much echoing exactly what you said. There's there's other things um, tertiary to the to the license that do need to be factored in, particularly with e-commerce um, marketing is, is a huge thing. So yeah. um, things like getting uh, your pixel built up, I believe, is one of them. And, and but yeah, as I say, I think you you touched on most of the, most of those points. I think yeah. also we've been getting the point that there are um, unanswered questions in the Q and A section. So maybe we can go through this quickly as well. There is a lady Gianna. She asked, "What are the restrictions for e-commerce licenses if a free zone, if being in a free zone, or uh, um, having an onshore DED license?" Mm. So I think we covered most of those differences, particularly through the questions, as well as at the beginning. Uh, just to, to, to give you a quick brief, the dip main difference is, uh, I mean, first of all, a DD license doesn't have a mainland activity. Um, it would only be connecting buyer and a seller. So for strictly e-commerce, things like harboring your own goods and actually selling them yourself, it's not going to be suitable. Uh, second of which, again, free zone is just a bit more flexible. Um, and you, for the free zone, one thing to note, you just have to use a, a distributor, i.e. like a delivery company. But those are the main key differences for e-commerce. Um, I believe most of which we've, we've touched on for the, from the previous questions as well. Um, Gianna did ask a second time, which was, can I have two brands under the same company license? So uh, the, the, the straight answer to this is no, unless they're under the exact same company name, um, which obviously if they're two different brands is not going to be the case. So for, for different brands, you would either have to, to form a franchising agreement, which is very complicated, um, or you would have to open up two different licenses for, for each of those. But as I say, at a price point of 5,750, I believe the, the returns you'd get back for two companies is going to far outweigh that cost. Yeah. 
Um, also, don't forget having two brands under the same company license. A lot of people think, wow, it's amazing. You know, it's so super. Let me just do three or four brands. Don't forget you individually for each brand, you would need to do an accounting. You need to do separate marketing campaigns, administer separate social channels, you know, be the voice of those different brands. And I can tell you, I mean, if you have a team, it will get difficult, you know, making sure that you assign, you know, which team member takes care of what, but even for you to manage and supervise what we normally have when brands are coming into the market, we recommend them to go with a staggered approach. Let's say for the first six months to one year, you know, launch the first brand, then launch the second, launch the third. It will give you some time, you know, to focus on, learn from the mistakes that you probably do on your previous brands and then adopt them and not, you know, tap into the same, let's say, financial or decision um, mistakes and then have that learning curve to, you know, better your businesses as you go along. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with all of those points. So I think that the, the Q&A, there's, there's, I asked the, the same question as, as was asked before, which, which we covered. Um, there was another one from, actually two more. Um, so Ernest what, asked, what is the cost for a visa and a license? Yeah. Um, so let's say for a free zone, for example, visa and a license, the lowest, um, which again would be about Sharjah Media City free zone in the Northern Emirates, be aware. If you're looking for Dubai, it'll be more expensive. Northern Emirates Free Zone, Sharjah Media City will be about 18, 17,500 rather. Um, and a Dubai-based Free Zone, let's say Maidan is, is one of the options, operationally identical to, to Sharjah, but with those Dubai visas, et cetera, which, and a Dubai address, it's going to be about five or 6,000 more. So it comes to, to 26,500. Um, so a bit more than five or 6,000 more. But, but yeah, those are the rough costs with a visa and everything. So you can see the, the, the difference between the, uh, the two jurisdictions. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, that's that's one thing. Then I think Claudia asked a question. Thanks a lot for the event. It's very insightful. I wanted to ask if I have a full time employment contract, do I need to legally obtain an NOC from my employer? I think a lot of free zones do require that um, uh, onshore as well. But maybe you can just clarify that for us as well. Yeah, certainly. So um, it, it depends what what jurisdiction you're, you're wanting to set up the company under free zones. None of them require an NOC, um, uh, unless it's specific, let's say like DMCC, for example, which is about a hundred thousand dirhams to set up. So most likely not where you want to form your e-commerce company. Um, but yeah, most of the things, particularly Northern Emirates free zones and, and Maidan, which I just quoted in Dubai, um, none of those require an NOCs. So if it's a, a free zone company you're looking to set up, there's no need to acquire that. You can set up a company under your existing employment visa without an NOC. Very, very simple. And again, it saves on that, that visa cost. So it's a, it's a win-win, particularly on, on, for the free zones on that one. Um, I yeah. believe, yeah, Dev, uh, yeah, sorry. No, I've just seen Dev asking, I'm working in full-time e-commerce. Yeah. Uh, can I still start my business? Now, obviously, if you can do that, you should definitely have an okay from your um, you know, employer. You need some sort of an, an NOC, especially if you're trying to compete. Probably if you're working full-time in e-commerce, you need to make sure if you're not competing with what your business or your, you know, your employer is doing in terms of drop shipping. Will it take a lot of money? I mean, I think Zach touched based on what the license costs, what a license with a visa or without a visa will cost as well. Um, what you would need to do, definitely, you would need to build your brand. So other than branding in the e-commerce website where you can pull through an app called Oberlo on Shopify, where you can, you know, pull in the dropship products that you can deploy in your store. Um, we will show you that later in the series as well, but just to touch base on definitely you would need an investment amount, a total amount as a breakdown of cost. I think Nico, that's what you've done in the online course together with um, the team, I right? I mean, yeah, what we did in the course, we were actually building a real business, a real dropship business, which is um, smartpatch.ie. Um, okay. And at that time, I think the website, including the logo, which we have done actually with a freelancer and even showed you where and how, um, I think all of that was around $1,000, including the banner designs, logos, and uh, Shopify theme, plus um, pictures, um, the license where you can get some pictures from and all of that. So in, in total, it was a $1,000 to get the site ready now. Yeah. Um, I hope that answers the question. I mean, definitely we'll be going further. And I think um, there was the point, Zach, that you touched based on the two different brands at Gianna's question. If you could just verify that again, there was a bit of 
not understanding um, with, with two different business lines within the license it means I cannot have two different brands. Yeah, so the way it works is unless the brands are, either, unless you either first off create uh, an initial company, which is either, let's say, a group. Um, actually, to be honest, either way, if you have two separate brands, you would need two separate licenses because they're going to be under different names, presumably. Unless you want to put them under the, the exact same name, which sort of defeats the point of having two separate brands. But no, the, the, the base, just to, to get to the core of the question, you, you would need two separate licenses. Great. I mean, I touched based as well on it, the accounting, you need to make sure to have a se separate set of accounts. You can't make mix those tools into one as well. Um, and then as well, in terms of payment plans. So someone asked as well, if there are payment plans for visa and license with Creative Zone, I believe then, yeah. Yeah, so we, we can provide payment plans. Now it would require you to have um, a, a UAE bank account if you don't already. So that's one thing to note that payment plans um, cannot be done through us uh, without having UAE bank account, I, it can be personal or, or corporate, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, payment plans certainly we can we can offer that. So, um, for instance, um, one of the, the major banks, Emirates MBD, do a, a payment plan called the Easy Payment Plan. Although you do have to have a credit card, but it means that that it gets split up into twelve monthly payments at zero percent, for example. Alternatively, if you don't have a credit card, we can we can do monthly payments uh, regardless. I think that's a fair point. Nico, there is one question you've seen in the Q&A, right? Yeah, in the Q&A, um, there was one question raised if there is something where they can look further into or even being mentored or um, trained on that. So what we have, we have an online course about that on our, on our website. So it's a drop shipping course, which we have done here in the UAE. Um, and we have built a real dropship business and like literally screen recorded every single step as well as educated every single step. So I think a mentoring itself as a mentoring, um, this is what we could recommend because you get like almost a 21 hours of really good content. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, don't forget, we have Creative Zone partnered up as well in this. So there will be a session focused on business licensing setup, specifically around e-commerce. If then anyone needs further mentoring, I mean, we do mentoring as a company, but that's more with organizations through official mentorship programs. So that could be individually, separately, so you can approach us for that. I think let's come back to the topic. And uh, in terms of Gianna's last question in the Q&A, as a free zone company, can we participate in markets with e-commerce licenses in Dubai or Abu Dhabi? Um, yes, you can, because Dubai and Abu Dhabi are both within the UAE. Um, so if you're using a delivery company, any, which we, which you would be required to, to be using anyway, under a free zone license, then, then perfectly fine. You can operate uh, throughout the UAE with the Dubai or Northern Emirates free zone uh, company formation. But as soon as let's say, if you want to actually start your operations on the ground there, i.e. doing your logistics yourself, or you want to open up a new entity, it would have to be registered either in Dubai or Abu Dhabi, whichever one you're actually, um, operating the most in. But, but yeah, as it stands for e-commerce, very simple, free zone company, using a logistics provider, you can operate it throughout the UAE. Yeah, um, I think let's continue on the questions we have set here. So we make sure we finalize them as well within the time frame. So if I open um, a license in the UAE to establish my Shopify dropshipping store, can I use this license for Amazon as well? Now, that's a question we do get asked a lot, and I think it's just a fair point to, to raise here because all of you at some point, if you're having you know, the, the question of bringing in products into this country that are not here or dropshipping or, or you know, commission products what, whatsoever, you will have the point of, should I just sell it on my side? You know, how do I get the traffic on? Is it better to sell it on Amazon, Moon, et cetera? So, you know, Zach, in terms of opening a license, will that also be, um, will I also be kind of able to sell that through other e-tailers or distribution channels online? Or, or will I only be able then to do that on the, um, yeah, on, on a different license setup? Yeah, no, exactly the same license. The, the good news is, is that. So uh, it's e-commerce activity, which would be required for drop shipping on, on uh, Shopify is exactly what both Amazon and Noon require um, in order to, to sell on there or become a seller there. So you can use it for, for multi, multifaceted. Yeah, perfectly fine. Great. I think that's, that's good news because a lot, of, a lot of us here, you know, will probably then ask, okay, what if I sell it through Unas or what if I offer my product through Namshi, you know, like 
even if you don't mm. decide to have an e-commerce site right from the get-go you can still make use of the digital channels but you again you know whatever you do commercially you definitely would need a license for it i think that kind of sums it up um then other than that um why do i need a license for drop uh, shopify drop shipping or in general drop shipping if shopify is uh, an online store all is digital nothing is physical it's a classical question we get um and i'm sure you do get that a lot as well so maybe let's get your um feedback on that as well on that sure yeah i think we we touched about this um in another question as well with the, it's mainly the differences between forming an entity uh, from a company or doing it on an individual basis um so both mm -hmm. are possible if you're looking to store your own goods you can only have the company trade license which we established at the beginning but we'll go with the drop shipping idea first where you're not holding a stock you can do it on a personal basis with a freelancer permit but it's very very limited so um the, the in the case where you wanted a license if you're being a bit more serious about the business if you tested out the market let's say with a freelancer um and you want to get a bit more control particularly over the the tourist um the legislation and the um, security in which the, the company is formed or your your uh, dropshipping site is formed with the LLC structure, things like that, then then a company is, is the way you want to go. But but yeah, we did cover the majority of that question um, a, a yeah. little bit earlier. Great. And then I think uh, last but not least, what we had prepared for you guys was a typical question as well when residing in X country or, for example, here we took Canada as an example. Um, and so is my payment gateway, but I want to drop ship um, products to the UAE, eventually other countries. I think Vasilis had asked a similar question with related to Germany, but let's say the suppliers I'm looking at are also UAE based. So how can I go ahead with this? Yeah, exactly. So there was a similar question we, we just addressed as well. So it's, it's, uh, it's really up to the individual how they want to use it. Now there are a substantial amount of benefits, particularly not, not just on the, the, the taxation point of view and obviously the the, the access um, to Middle East, North Africa and the Asian markets. But there's also uh, a liability um, and liability question to, to forming a company here. But as I said, you can just use a distributor. Now, distributors will also take a quite a, quite a high percentage to actually do so. Um, again, it, it depends on the, on the drop shipping structure and, and what the manufacturer is is quoting you but usually they'll try to charge quite a significant percentage more than it would usually cost if you had your own business but it will be perfectly fine to um to, to use the distributor if you're let's say in this question's example in canada but yeah it, it's really up to up to an individual basis if you want to if you see the value in forming a company sure yeah thank you thank you zach um, I saw Isbah brought up another question in using e-commerce licenses. Can we sell multiple products from different categories like apparel or agriculture products, et cetera, or do we need specific licenses approvals? I think that goes more into the activities of the actual license business activity. Is that right? Yeah, it does indeed. So for uh, the e-commerce activity, the, it, the actual activity is retail sale of any kind of good via the internet. Um, so you don't have to, if it's just generic things like, let's say clothes, for example, or anything like that, um, then it's fine. The general rule of thumb is anything that is ingested or applied to the skin needs a specific uh, separate business activity. So for example, as I said, uh, raw agricultural products, presumably that would be for the purpose of being ingested, meaning that you would have to have a separate business activity. It doesn't have to be a separate license, but it has to have its own activity. Um, for let's say if it's if it's wholesale or retail, wholesale being business to business, retail being business to customer, it would have to let's say wholesale or retail trade of food or beverage. It would have to have its own activity for for that sort of stuff. But um, in terms of approvals, there's nothing needed under a freezer. Great. I think um, from our end, we are at the end um, of our presentation, and of course, as the questions asked. Um, we went into your questions, so thank you guys everyone for being so super active and picking mostly Zach's brain on the business licensing. Um, is there any other questions that came to your minds, anything that sparked out of the you know topics of the webinar today? Alternatively, I would say um, we will definitely have um, this recorded, so also you know forward going sessions if there's anything that wasn't picked up properly or anything. That's why I also make sure of attending the event in person on the 25th of this month. Uh, we would really like to not only meet you, but also, you know, 
you know, whatever has been interest sparked in you and, you know, needs a proper thought process on businesses, because we do understand you're not just opening a business from today to tomorrow, but, um, you know, do come in, meet us, you know, check in with the Zach. Maybe there is some legislations that have changed um, that you would like to get an update on. So, yeah, we will be happy to, to see you. And thank you guys. You are awesome too. Thank you for all the comments in the chat. Yeah, definitely. I'd like to, to echo that. It's, it's been a real pleasure, um, again, having, having my brains picked. But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's always exciting to work with budding entrepreneurs that, that are looking to sort of realize their dream in, in UAE and, and sort of have full access. So what I'll also do, again, looking forward to, to meeting, meeting some of you on the 25th. It's definitely going to be a, good to, to put a face to a name. Uh, what I'll also do is I'll, I'll paste my, my email in the, uh, in the chat if you have any specific questions about uh, businesses and things like that. Happy to, to go over that with you on a, on a separate call or, or anything like that. I'll paste that in now. Great. Um, we will do the same from our end if you need anything e-commerce related. But then, of course, we will see you guys back um, next week. I think maybe um, now it's time for Zishan to jump in and to tell us probably what are the next operational steps. Yeah. Perfect. Um, thank you so much both for, for doing this session with us. Um, we're just gonna uh, up, wrap the session up and we're gonna send the recording with, to the attendees and to the people who signed up and couldn't make it. Um, and so the next session will be next Wednesday. So the next three weeks, the sessions will be on Wednesday at the same time, five to 6 p.m. Uh, so you have topics such as uh, setting up a payment gateway and the logistics required to uh, connect your banking for your e-commerce business. Uh, the week after that will be a topic on uh, how to market and uh, sell your e-commerce brand. And we'll finally end with the webinars uh, with the last week on um, how to build your e-commerce website. Uh, so at the end of that, we will actually have a physical meet and greet on the 25th of November at the business setup at, at the business hub of Creative Zone, uh, which is in downtown Dubai. So Nico and Julia are gonna be there and many people from our team are gonna be there for you to meet. And it'll be great for you guys to come and network with us as well. Um, and so, yeah, we will follow this up with an email with the same details, as well as uh, the links for Creative 971 and for setting up a business with Creative Zone. And uh, Julia, I believe you sent us um, a code as well right yeah there is a code um actually going to happen for you all of you attending throughout the sessions i mean throughout the next weeks or this week um which will be um, a set code for creative zone to be able to um, purchase the online course with a discount now obviously uh, we're being able to offer that code to you exclusively in collaboration with creative zone because we're doing this in a partnership and obviously you know anything that would lead or lead and helping you getting your business set up and also started in e-commerce will, will definitely help. I think there is other two questions that came in just to highlight one question, if you can also attend Ripe Market and another one about a portal in B2B. So definitely those questions, feel free probably to email us so we can direct them and answer them through email um, in a more personalized manner then as well. Perfect. Yeah, definitely uh, happy to answer that in an email. What we will also do is we'll take all these questions and we'll take a report of the chat and I will share that with you, Julia and Zach. So if there's any, any people that you would like to personally reach out to, you can do so. Sure. And you can connect with us as well on Instagram or LinkedIn. I think um, Zishan will share that as well. And then, yeah, we're definitely looking forward to next week and um, yeah, have a great evening then. Perfect. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for attending, and we'll see you soon. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care.